The plugin it makes it easy to perfect the mix of your kick and bass every time just got even better. Sub Ninja just got an update, and the great news is that if you already own a license, it's completely free. Hi, I'm Jay, also known as The Him. I'm a dance music producer with over half a billion streams on Spotify and I've DJed all over the world. A few months ago, I released my very first plugin ever called Sub Ninja, and the response to it so far has been freaking insane. Not only have I gotten testimonials from massive DJs like Hartwell, Nicky Romero, and Sam Feld, I've also heard from producers at all sorts of levels from all over the planet telling me their stories about how they love Sub Ninja and how it's helped improve their mixes and their workflow. And as a thank you gift for all of you who have supported me, I've got an update out with even more new features. So let's see what's new in version 1.1. First of all, I've done a massive rework to the code to make Sub Ninja much faster than it was. So it should be able to run multiple instances, even on slightly slower computers. I've also added a manual delay offset features, as in some setups, the delay wasn't always compensated correctly. So say you're using Ableton, and you've got a heavy linear phase filter running, the timeline might not be in sync. Then you can go to settings, show manual offset, and you can actually move the slider. And you can also just check the delay, it says 160 milliseconds, and just put it in there. Now everything is in sync with the project again. A big new feature that a lot of people requested is the ability to have sidechain inputs. Sub Ninja now allows you to route up to four sidechain inputs into it, and you can choose where and how you want to see them. To use sidechaining in Sub Ninja, make sure you turn it on first. Go to the top right menu and click Enable Sidechain Inputs. Then make sure you route some sound to each sidechain. In Ableton, you can do that by setting up three or up to four different return tracks and making sure their output is set to main and then side J one, two, and three for the different return tracks. Then you can send the individual tracks to the side chain bus by just choosing the send levels. After you've done that, you can go back into Sub Ninja and turn on its side chain. These buttons turn them on or off and these buttons allow you to select if you want to see the left, right, mid, same as mono, or side channel. I usually have them on mid. At the same time, if you want, you can also show the main waveform again by turning that on here. And the main waveform will also have either sub view on or off. The side chain inputs are direct from the source and are not going through the sub filter. I usually have it set up so that I have one channel on top showing my side chains, whichever I'm interested in at the moment, maybe the kick and something else. And the bottom, showing the sub for the mid signal of the whole track. I really hope you enjoyed this new version and I'm always working on adding new and better features. If you wanna let me know what you really need in Sub Ninja, make sure you join our Discord or hit me up directly at dsp at thehim.com. You can find out more about Sub Ninja on dsp.thehim.com and you can find me everywhere at thehim. Thanks for watching. Bye.